So, uh, my name is Pierre Carlsen and I'm working with an organization called Baltic Development Forum. And uh, we have, uh, for the last 20 years, been organizing conferences and uh, giving out uh, reports about the development in uh, our region. And three months ago, we gave out a political state of the region report, so-called, where six researchers uh, from the region were trying to describe uh, the situation after Brexit and uh, after Trump. And one of them is uh, with me today, Jana Puklerin, uh, and I will ask her just to very quickly uh, present uh, the uh, the results. It's not easy because there mm -hmm. were six researchers and she's alone, exactly. but, but give it a try. Well, um, the idea of our report was to um, think about how Brexit and the election of Donald Trump have actually influenced the thinking in the Baltic Sea region. Um, we covered um, every single state of the Baltic Sea region. Um, as I said, we had several researches and we tried to find out whether um, the reactions were um, heterogeneous uh, or homogeneous and um, we tried to find new possibilities for cooperation or we thought whether Brexit or Donald Trump would open up some new possibilities for cooperation amongst the region. Hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now came the founder of the Baltic Development Forum, Uffe Elman Jensen, uh, and I would ask him uh, shortly to tell me what was what was the idea? What what did you want to do with this <laughs> Baltic Development Forum? Very quickly. <laughs> well, first apologize the panel downstairs we took know, a little know, longer. What was the big idea? Well, the inspiration came from uh, the World Economic Forum where you uh, had this World Economic Forum where politicians, businessmen, academicals, uh, academicians, etc. discussed global affairs. What was needed up here where we had this new region with so immense possibilities and the Council of Baltic Sea States and so on was a parallel to that. So we stole the idea <laughs> and then we uh, created this organization that in a way was like an umbrella for the number of organizations that had popped up because as people have found out in the Baltic countries we Nordics are so happy with organizations <laughs> we love to make organizations about almost everything so sometimes it's a good thing to have an umbrella and then uh, the basis for this new form was the annual so-called Baltic Summit that has moved around in Baltic capitals, around the Baltic Sea, and has attracted a participation from a huge number of people. And of course, some, some difficulties have arisen in the re most recent years because it's still important to keep Russia on board and to keep the debate open with Russia. And uh, I, for one, strongly believe, like I did during the Cold War, that uh, if they don't behave, you shall show them that you don't like their behavior and we shall be strong enough to make sure that they don't misbehave in our uh, uh, yards. But at the same time, keep an open mind, cooperate where you can cooperate. And there again, something like the Baltic Development Forum uh, gives a good platform for that without being too naive, of course. But Thank you are not here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying not to be here. Uh, Jana, one of the differences between what they were talking about there for too long, uh, the, uh, the, Nordic, the Nordic Baltic Cooperation, and the uh, Baltic Development Forum, which was uh, which is covering the whole region, is of course that Germany and Poland, and as you said, Russia, uh, are participating. And um, we, you were writing about the developments uh, three months ago. Since then, we have had the election in Germany. Mm -hmm. How do you see the role of Germany and Poland? We, we will come back to mm -hmm. Russia. Uh, uh, of Germany and Poland in the region in the, in the future. How do you see it? Well, I deal with them separately with two countries yeah. because, as you know, the relations also between the two countries are not uh, at an all-time high at the <laughs> moment. Um, so when it comes to Germany and the expectations of the region, I think, that Germany got a lot of attention, especially after Brexit, because for the Nordic states and the Baltic states, but also Poland, um, one of their major allies in the EU is leaving um, the EU. So I think um, 
there is a lot of attention uh, on Germany and a lot of expectations that Germany fills at least some of the gaps that the UK uh, is leaving behind. And maybe there is also a new possibility for uh, deepened cooperation because at the one hand we have some, some states looking for uh, another kind of big country to, 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 to connect with and at the same time we have Germany not very well in not feeling very well in the position of being a, such a dominant country of being such a giant and always looking for cooperation and partners so and when i think about i don't know the common digital market or something like this i think there could be also potential for deepened cooperation mm. when it comes to poland it's much more complicated because poland currently is one of the troublemakers in the eu or and at least some of the poles Uh, the, the, uh, yeah, not not take no, all sorry. the polls. No, not take all the polls hostage. That's pr very right. But the yeah, yeah. recent government and what what I am fearing is that because the relations between Germany and Poland are increasingly bad now, with the uh, question of reparations mm. looming and all that, that this relationship kind of they have spillover effects to I don't know cooperation in the region of all the countries. You know. Russia being already a problem, now Poland is also a problem. Mm. So. Uwe, um, I'm now working with this group of young researchers, which is great fun. Uh, <laughs> and now you have the chance uh, to tell me and to tell us what you think we should be doing in our next report. <laughs> Because now we have been describing all the problems, Russia last year and Poland yeah. this year and so on. But, but what, what, what should we concentrate on in, in our next report? I think you should continue along the tracks that you have put already in this political uh, state of the region and continue along that line because it is so important now to look at how cooperation can be maintained. Mm -hmm. Poland, yes, I still remember one of the best remarks I heard from a Pole in recent years. That was when Sikorsky when he was foreign minister of Poland and made his speech at the Humboldt University, mm. he said, there's one thing I fear more than a strong Germany, that is a weak Germany. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so damned right. But times and have so much changed in so Poland So much since has then. changed, but still, so much has changed in Poland, yes. But uh, due to the statistics of... Uh, Uh, how you get to the number of seats in the Sejm, you know that it, it can change again. Yeah. <laughs> you have seen that before, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you have seen how the PIS, they uh, got their uh, well-deserved punishment by the voters, and you don't need that much in order to get back. And there are still this basis of good mm -hmm. Europeans in Polish politics. Mm -hmm. So I'm always... Uh, I'm always believing in this good saying, noch ist Polen nicht verloren. No, you're right, <laughs> and also the people's to people's contact is very intense mm. still, yes. be especially yeah. between Germany and, it's and so Poland. Important. But what, what I think is another aspect for the future um, is that maybe I'm too EU focused, but that um, you talked about that downstairs as well, that uh, with the new Franco German mm. momentum mm. or tandem, if that is gaining speed, uh, I think it would also be up to Germany to not leave other regions behind and maybe to mm. not solely connect to France, but mm. also to kind of feel its connection to the Baltic Sea region. Yeah. That would be would my be hope. It would be good if you could manage that. Le well. Let me uh, tell you a joke from when the Council of Baltic Sea State was founded. We discussed that Uh, first of all, between Genscher, who was then German foreign minister, and myself. And uh, there were some ideas that in this council of Baltic Sea States, it should not be the Federal Republic. It should be uh, Schleswig-Holstein and mecklenburg vorpommern <laughs> sitting there. Mm. And then Genscher said, no, yeah. we need to have a very big elephant sitting in the room together with the other elephant. Mm. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about. In order to balance mm. things off. Because in the beginning, that was the main purpose. Mm. To have somewhere to sit down and talk. As Churchill famously said, uh, jaw jaw is better than war war. Mm. And uh, I remember when it was created, there was a magazine in Finland that said, quoted an unknown diplomat up there for saying, This is the most superfluous international organization ever invented. <laughs> And in the beginning, it might have looked like that. But the whole idea was to sit down 
and talk, 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 and then try to find some substance to put on the table. And they have managed to do that. And I think that is so important, keeping the contacts. And uh, that's what's happening in reports like the one you are doing there. So, but but Uwe, down there, uh, where we were mainly talking about Nordic Baltic cooperation, yep. you were men- mentioning the Stoltenberg report, yes. and it, we we could need a new Stoltenberg report on the Nordic Baltic. Yes, um, your old organization, Council for Baltic Sea State, is now asking a group of wise men to look mm. in the cooperation and come up with ideas. Mm. Um, what do, you, what do you think we should, I mean, we would be very happy to lead in with some good ideas for the wise men and the Stoltenberg II or whatever it's going yeah. to be called. What, 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 what should we be looking at? How, how I think we're we talking about two different things, mm-hmm. because what you can do and what can be done in uh, the concept of the Council of Baltic Sea yeah. States uh, is not the hard security no, issues. of course not. And uh, what I want a Stoltenberg II on the NBA to deal with is, to be absolutely frank, hard security. Because other existing fora that covers the NBA are not able to do that. So we need to find new ways and means to strengthen hard security. That's one thing. And what should be done uh, in, a, in the context we're talking about here is to find out where are the barriers that prevent us from uh, taking advantage of all the possibilities we have around the Baltic Sea? And uh, looking away from many of the problems that are facing us, there are barriers for uh, how trade can move, how people can move, uh, capital can move, and so on. Identify the barriers and try to get rid of them. That is an ongoing task. Now Uwe was talking about hard security, and one of the issues yesterday was the the NATO uh, demand now to get up to two percent of your uh, GDP for for defense. And somebody said, "Oh, terrible! If Germany will get up to two percent, all the neighbors will start to worry again." <laughs> First, how do you see the possibility of getting up to something near near two percent with the new government and and uh, situation in Germany and and do you see that I, I mean I don't see that uh, people in Denmark will be very afraid if, if Germany uh, yeah. uses some more on defense no this argument is usually made in Germany by Germans and uh, it's usually targeted um, f- to a French or Polish mm audience. So, uh, or the idea from some Germans is that if we spend 2% on, pers- uh, on defense, that we will be by far the largest military force mm. in the EU and that our neighbors, France and Poland, aren't very happy about this. The thing is that I have heard this more inside <laughs> Germany than outside yeah. Germany. Mm, mm. Uh, I haven't, I have asked some French policy planners about mm. this and Polish and they were very encouraging. They yeah. said, oh, um, spend more, mm. Let's start spending more, and we are very happy with this. I, I actually, I, I, don't, I don't know how much truth is in this argument, but I think um, they can be pretty relaxed because um, what we subscribe to 2014 is that we are aiming at spending more towards 2% within mm. the next mm. 10 years, yeah, which exactly. means until yeah. 24. And I mean, we have uh, raised our defense budget, mm. but we are still um, at at the moment at 1.2%. Mm. And mm. this is, I mean, everybody yeah. complains about this. So, And the German army is, is such in such bad shape so that we urgently need to spend more money. Mm. And when you ask about the elections, the FDP is for spending more money for mm. um, um, uh, spending more on defense. The Greens are not, traditionally not, but the other, it, it would be a four party coalition like CSU, CDU, FDP, and Greens, and the other three parties, CSU, CDU, and FDP, would be in favor of spending more. Mm. So I can envision a grand bargain to give the Greens something on civilian crisis prevention and okay. development aid and all that to compensate for spending more on defense. And if you 
consider the concept of total defense. Exactly. There should be some exactly. elements there that the green. Yes. And after all, the greens gave us previously Shoska Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one could hope that some of his spirit is still around there. So I'm not worried. No, what Cem Özdemir recently said that he was yeah. very interested in a yeah, functioning yeah, German yeah. army. Yes, I mean, of course. So and uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm the oldest in this company, <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm not worried about a stronger German uh, military. But this, Be this, has, this is something which has happened during the last 25 years. Yeah. Because I remember when German was reunited, I was working at Nature, yeah, yeah. and I came back to a, a party, a family party in Jutland. <coughs> And the old Danes in, in, in that party were like, oh, Germany reunited, it will be a big one. Uh, how do you think you are at NATO? You know things. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, how will it go? The young ones were saying, ah, a big market is opening yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, in the early 60s, when I did my national service as a soldier, I worked in a NATO headquarters where there were some of the first German officers in Denmark. They were there together with uh, Americans, mm. Brits, etc., Norwegians, and they all wore civilian clothes because to see foreign uniforms yeah. on the streets of Denmark in 1961, uh-oh, that might have created problems. But the atmosphere there, and in particular some of the German officers I came to know, removed any concerns I might have had. So I think that Germany and the German defense forces, they have earned their democratic credentials and should not worry about that. And I suspect that some of the guys in Germany who talks like that, they're just trying to find a good excuse for and saving not spending the exactly. more. Yeah, because it's very difficult to sell to the yeah. German population, yeah, because yeah. if you spend more on defense, you had to mm. cut somewhere else. Exactly. Why? We have, we have the same discussion. So, uh, yeah, the Germans... Pay some more in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you have That's to raise taxes. You have changed a bit of that <laughs> one since you were well, minister. Some, some things are more important than <laughs> other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which but is difficult to <laughs> communicate to a German audience these days still. But, but, but for a Keep second, let's come, let's come back to the other elephant, the Russians. Uh, because you rightly say, we have to talk to them. We have to yes. talk, 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 talk. Yes. Not about them, but with them. Uh, yeah. And to engage them and engage them. Yeah. But, 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 how do we, but, but, but how do we do in this situation? People are saying, you should talk to nor the northwestern region, to St. Petersburg and Kaliningrad. Yes, of course we should, but the center is Moscow and the people deciding are sitting in yeah, Moscow. Yeah, yeah. So we, we also have to talk with them in Moscow. Any good ideas? Well, I'm very negative. Maybe you can give a positive <laughs> uh, impulse later, but I think what was said also on a panel today that the idea how European security should work uh, of Russia and the idea of the West are pretty much opposed. So mm. uh, the whole question about how to deal with uh, Ukraine, Georgia and all that. I think it deeply divides us mm. and I think Russia has taken a different path and they are definitely not interested in joining this Euro-Atlantic uh, architecture mm. and, and, and also I think it's pretty difficult to get them back but maybe you're more optimistic than no, I am. I think they're waiting. They're waiting because what did they see when uh, the war in Georgia took place? They saw that a lot of contacts were broken, sanctions, etc. Uh, the uh, uh, Russia-NATO uh, forum was cut down and so on. It lasted for one year. Putin and Medvedev just had to sit back and wait, wait, wait. And then, right, they were. Then came first NATO and said, oh, come on, shouldn't we start talking again? Then came... Uh, Hillary Clinton with this terrible Pedagogica, <laughs> with <the button> <laughs> Pedagogica uh, and Lavrov uh, made his funny joke there, yeah. all he enjoyed that. And then the French, they started to sell uh, warships to them. Fortunately, they never uh, went in service, <laughs> but uh, that's why they're waiting. And therefore, the worst thing we can do on our side is to start taking away the sanctions. Mm -hmm. You can always discuss whether it was a smart thing to start sanctions, but once they were introduced, you have to keep them up until something is delivered from the other side. They are waiting right now to see, come on now, they will soften up again. You have in Germany a lot of Putin versteers. Oh, you find them in other <laughs> countries as well. Some are even on the payroll. 
And uh, oh, it's awful to see. I don't know about whom you're talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that we don't have so much time left because if, if, if we had, then we would go into Nord Stream 2 and other things. We so, um, so we will not do that. Uh, let, me, let me just thank you and, and finish off by saying that you heard about this political state of the region report. There will be a new one coming out in June the 4th at our summit in Tallinn. You can always find it on Baltic Development webpage. But we are not only doing political report, we are doing a yearly economical trade report. Very important. Please, you can read it there. And now we are also doing some digital economy report. And that's interesting because that's where the Estonians and Latvians are in the front and the Germans are far behind. Absolutely. So they have, so they have to learn. Um, we will have a new report coming out supported by Konrad Adenauer Stiftung in June in Tallinn. We are looking forward to Thank you very much. Thank you.